Do you consider yourself to be a rational person? Do you apply critical thinking as much as you can? How confident are you that your decision making isn't influenced by emotion? You might be surprised about how little conscious control you actually have over your decision and how much emotions contribute to those decisions. Hi, I'm R. And I'm Jay. And in this video, we're going to talk about the science of how emotions influence our decisions. Let's get to it. The importance of emotion to the variety of human experience is evident in that what we notice and remember is not the mundane, but events that evoke feelings of joy, sorrow, pleasure, and pain. Emotion provides the principal currency in human relationships, as well as the motivational force for what is best and worst in human behavior. Emotion exerts a powerful influence on reason, and in ways neither understood nor systematically researched, contributes to the fixation of belief. That quote was taken from a 2002 paper, which combined with numerous other papers in the field of emotion and cognition, have now given us evidence-based insight into the processes of decision-making with relation to emotional influences on consciousness and attention. These scientific fields have concluded that at least a large portion of decision-making occurs subconsciously and is heavily influenced by emotions. While this is well established in the scientific community, the understanding of this is not as established in the general public. The overall framework of decision making is relatively simple, with a stimulus, a decision, and an action. However, the mechanisms in the neurology of conscious and unconscious thought are much less simple. Though a number of studies using different methods of neuroimaging during decision-based tasks have been able to outline what certain structures of the brain do and which actions occur consciously. The research outlines that information is processed in the subconscious regions of the brain before entering the conscious regions. This understanding allows them to be able to predict decisions an individual will make before the individual is aware of the conclusions themselves. This explains how we can make decisions unconsciously whilst having the perception of our decisions being made consciously. But let's focus on how this relates to emotions. The most primal regions of the brain are those associated with basic emotions such as fear, disgust and lust. These emotions occur as instincts interacting with consciousness, and they evolve to protect us from potential dangers such as predators and rotten food, as well as to ensure reproduction. They stretch very far back on the phylogenetic tree, and exist at varying degrees in all vertebrates. Instincts evolved as a very specific reaction to a particular stimulus, and are usually defined by short to medium length behavioural responses to a well defined stimulus. They can be distinguished from reflex actions such as a pupil contracting in response to light exposure, which occurs as a very acute action in response to a specific stimulus. An example of behavioural instinct is the journey a baby sea turtle makes when they first hatch. The baby turtles will crawl until they reach water. This action is performed by all members of the species and is done before any behaviour can be learned, which may influence the instinctive response. Hence, the instinct is biologically programmed into the animal. So how does this relate to complex human emotions? Higher level cognition animals such as dolphins, apes and humans have enormously different brain structure to many other animals. Much of this is represented by the large frontal cortex, which allows for greater awareness and complex decision making. This advantage to decision making, however, does not completely override the pre-existing hardware that existed before the development of the frontal cortex. These basic instincts still exist and must be integrated into a system which now has the capacity for self-reflection and forethought. What this results in is rather than a behavior being predetermined through instinct, that same instinct creates an emotion, awareness of the stimuli which encourages a particular behavior but is subject to review by the frontal cortex. Scientists are now beginning to piece together how all these components interact to create a brain capable of complex feelings and thought, but is still subject to basic instinctive responses. As mentioned briefly before, much of our decision making occurs subconsciously. This is where instinctive and habitual or learned responses play the biggest role. Decisions are often made without significant input from the frontal cortex, that is, without our awareness. This is the most efficient way for the brain to operate, as conscious deliberation of information takes time and energy, which could result in death in a high-pressure situation. Instead, conscious awareness is reserved for strategic planning and review of decisions, 
leaving the vast amounts of sensory and neural information to be processed subconsciously. And even in cases where the decisions are conscious, the process is still heavily influenced by subconscious factors. This makes the influence of our instinctive and learned behaviors far greater than our conscious brain in most aspects of decision making. This interaction between conscious and subconscious mechanisms has been termed the somatic marker hypothesis. This theory for the role of emotions and cognition on decision making was proposed by Dr. Antonio Damasio and is based on three assumptions. The first is that human reasoning and decision making depend on many levels of neural operation, some of which are subconscious. The second is that cognitive operations depend on support processes, such as attention, working memory, and emotion. And finally, reasoning and decision making depend on availability of knowledge about situations, actors, and options for action and outcomes. Studies supporting this hypothesis show that the main structures within the brain associated with these processes include the ventromedial prefrontal cortex. It has been found that people with lesions in this region of the brain perform significantly worse in activities which require deliberation of reward versus punishment, and do not improve in these tasks with repeated performance. What this shows is that despite conscious effort and effective working memory, patients with damage to the subconscious region of the brain are unable to improve on tasks which require conscious deliberation of risk and reward demonstrating that something we may consider to be primarily a conscious activity is heavily determined by unconscious brain function. The significance of this becomes clearer when we consider that the majority of brain functions, including emotional processes, occur in regions of the brain researchers believe to be subconscious, and these subconscious regions directly impact our conscious processes, including those related to our philosophical and political ideologies. Despite the abstract nature of political sensibilities, fundamental features of political ideology have been found to be deeply connected to biological mechanisms that may serve to defend against environmental challenges like contamination and physical threat. This has been further explored in regards to emotional neural networks and a person's political stances. Studies have demonstrated a strong link between subconscious emotional responses to disgust and fear with political leanings. Using fMRI imaging of the anterior cingulate cortex, which is associated with behavioral regulation as well as structures involved with emotional response such as the insula, thymus, basal ganglia, and amygdala, one study was able to predict a person's political ideology with over 70% accuracy using fMRI integrated computer analysis of these structures. Another study found that greater activity in the areas of the brain associated with emotion was linked to greater degrees of political polarization with less emotionally volatile individuals having more centrist political stances. The researchers stated it best. To put it differently, the proper interpretation of the findings reported here is not that biology causes politics or that politics causes biology, but that certain political orientations at some unspecified point become housed in our biology, with meaningful political consequences. This growing body of evidence strongly points to a brain which is highly reliant on unconscious processes and development of physical structures in regards to conscious decision making. Despite a feeling that we may have reached a decision through rationalization rather than a knee-jerk emotional reaction, this research shows that those reactions may play a bigger role than we are consciously aware of, and likely more than we would care to admit. This would influence almost every aspect in our lives, from our personal relationships to our political and religious positions. Understanding this may allow us to better evaluate our own decisions and understand the decisions of others. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for regular videos, like this video, and share it around to help us raise the bar of public discourse.